Leviathan, or the matter, for me and power of a commonwealth, ecclesiastical and civil. Book by Thomas Hobbes. Narrated by Andrew. Originally published in 1651. This is a great audiobook production, created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 33. Of the number, antiquity, scope, authority, and interpreters of the books of Holy Scripture. Of the books of Holy Scripture. By the books of Holy Scripture are understood those which ought to be the canon, that is to say, the rules of Christian life. And because all rules of life, which men are in conscience bound to observe, are laws. The question of the Scripture is the question of what is law throughout all Christendom, both natural and civil. For though it be not determined in Scripture what laws every Christian king shall constitute in his own dominions, yet it is determined what laws he shall not constitute. Seeing therefore I have already proved that sovereigns in their own dominions are the sole legislators. Those books only are canonical, that is, law, in every nation, which are established for such by the sovereign authority. It is true that God is the sovereign of all sovereigns, and therefore, when he speaks to any subject, he ought to be obeyed, whatsoever any earthly potentate command to the contrary. But the question is not of obedience to God, but of when and what God hath said. Which to subjects that have no supernatural revelation cannot be known, but by that natural reason which guided them for the obtaining of peace and justice. To obey the authority of their several commonwealths, that is to say, of their lawful sovereigns. According to this obligation, I can acknowledge no other books of the Old Testament to be holy scripture, but those which have been commanded to be acknowledged for such. By the authority of the Church of England. What books these are is sufficiently known without a catalogue of them here. And they are the same that are acknowledged by St. Jerome, who holdeth the rest, namely, the wisdom of Solomon, Ecclesiasticus, Judith, Tobias, the first and second of Maccabees. Though he had seen the first in Hebrew, and the third and fourth of Esdras, for Apocrypha. Of the canonical, Josephus a learned Jew, that wrote in the time of the emperor Domitian, reckoneth twenty-two, making the number agree with the Hebrew alphabet. St. Jerome does the same, though they reckon them in different manner. For Josephus numbers five books of Moses, thirteen of prophets, that writ the history of their own times, which how it agrees with the prophets' writings contained in the Bible we shall see hereafter, and four of hymns and moral precepts. But St. Jerome reckons five books of Moses, eight of prophets, and nine of other holy writ, which he calls of hagiographa. The Septuagint, who were seventy, learned men of the Jews, sent for by Ptolemy king of Egypt, to translate the Jewish law, out of the Hebrew into the Greek, have left us no other for holy scripture in the Greek tongues. But the same that are received in the Church of England. As for the books of the New Testament, they are equally acknowledged for canon by all Christian churches, and by all sects of Christians, that admit any books at all for canonical. Their antiquity. Who were the original writers of the several books of holy scripture? has not been made evident by any sufficient testimony of other history, which is the only proof of matter of fact, nor can be by any arguments of natural reason, for reason serves only to convince the truth not of fact, but of consequence. The light therefore that must guide us in this question, must be that which is held out unto us from the books themselves. And this light, though it show us not the writer of every book, yet it is not unuseful to give us knowledge of the time, wherein they were written. The Pentateuch not written by Moses. And first, for the Pentateuch, it is not argument enough that they were written by Moses, because they are called the five books of Moses. No more than these titles, the book of Joshua, the book of Judges, the book of Ruth, and the books of the kings, are arguments sufficient to prove that they were written by Joshua, by the judges, by Ruth, and by the kings. For in titles of books, the subject is marked as often as the writer. The history of Livy denotes the writer, but the history of Skanderbeg is denominated from the subject. We read in the last chapter of Deuteronomy, version 6, concerning the sepulcher of Moses, that no man knoweth of his sepulcher to this day, that is, to the day wherein those words were written. It is therefore manifest that those words were written after his interment. For it were a strange interpretation to say Moses spake of his own sepulcher, though by prophecy, that it was not found to that day wherein he was yet living. But it may perhaps be all edged that the last chapter only, 
not the whole Pentateuch, was written by some other man, but the rest not. Let us therefore consider that which we find in the book of Genesis, chap. 12, version 6, And Abraham passed through the land to the place of Sikhim, unto the plain of Moor, and the Canaanite was then in the land. Which must needs be the words of one that wrote when the Canaanite was not in the land, and consequently, not of Moses, who died before he came into it. Likewise Numbers 21, version 14. The writer sitteth another more ancient book, entitled, The Book of the Wars of the Lord, wherein were registered the acts of Moses, at the Red Sea, and at the Brook of Arnon. It is therefore sufficiently evident, that the five books of Moses were written after his time, though how long after it be not so manifest. But though Moses did not compile those books entirely, and in the form we have them, yet he wrote all that which he is there said to have written. As for example, the volume of the law, which is contained, as it seemeth in the eleven of Deuteronomy, in the following chapters to the twenty-seven, which was also commanded to be written on stones, in their entry into the land of Canaan. Deuteronomy 31, 9, And this did Moses himself write, and deliver to the priests and elders of Israel, to be read every seventh year to all Israel, at their assembling in the Feast of Tabernacles. And this is that law which God commanded, that their kings, when they should have established that form of government, should take a copy from the priests and Levites to lay in the side of the ark, D-U-T. 31. 26. And the same which having been lost, was long time after found again by Hilkiah, and sent to King Josias, who causing it to be read to the people, renewed the covenant between God and them. 2 King. 22. 8 and 23. 1, 2, 3. The Book of Joshua Written After His Time that the book of Joshua was also written long after the time of Joshua, may be gathered out of many places of the book itself. Joshua had set up twelve stones in the middayest of Jordan, for a monument of their passage, Josh 4. 9, of which the writer saith thus, There there unto this day, Josh 5. 9, 4, unto this day, is a phrase that signifieth the time past, beyond the memory of man. In like manner, upon the saying of the Lord, that he had rolled off from the people the reproach of Egypt, the writer saith, the place is called Gilgal unto this day, which to have said in the time of Joshua had been improper. So also the name of the valley of Acre, from the trouble that Achan raised in the camp, Josh. 7. 26. The writer saith, remaineth unto this day, which must needs be therefore long after the time of Joshua. Arguments of this kind there be many other, as Josh. 8. 29. 13, 13, 14, 14, 15, 63. The book of Judges and Ruth written long after the captivity. The same is manifest by like arguments of the book of Judges. Chap. 1, 21, 26, 6.24, 10.4, 15.19, 17.6 and Ruth 1. 1, but especially Judges 18, 30, where it is said, that Jonathan and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan, until the day of the captivity of the land. The like of the books of Samuel. That the books of Samuel were also written after his own time, there are the like arguments, 1 Sam. 5.5, 7.13, 15.27.6, and 30.25, where, after David had adjudged a qual part of the spoils, to them that guarded the ammunition, with them that fought, the writer Seth. He made it a statute and an ordinance to Israel to this day. 2. Sam. 6.4. Again, when David displeased that the Lord had slain Uzzah, for putting out his hand to sustain the ark, called the place Perez Uzzah, the writer saith, it is called so to this day. The time therefore of the writing of that book, must be long after the time of the fact, that is, long after the time of David. The books of the kings and the chronicles. As for the two books of the kings, in the two books of the Chronicles, besides the places which mention such monuments, as the writer Seth, remain till his own days, such as are 1 Kings 9.13, 9.21, 10, 12, 12.19, 2 Kings 2 2.22, 8.22, 10.27, 14.7, 16.6, 17.23, 17.34, 17.41. 1cron. 4.41. 5.26. It is argument sufficient they were written after the captivity in Babylon, 
that the history of them is continued till that time. For the facts registered are always more ancient than such books as make mention of, and quote the register. As these books do in diverse places, referring the reader to the chronicles of the kings of Judah, to the chronicles of the kings of Israel, to the books of the prophet Samuel, or the prophet Nathan, of the prophet Ahijah, to the vision of Jado, to the books of the prophet Surveah, and of the prophet Addo, Ezra and Nehemiah. The books of Esdras and Nehemiah were written certainly after their return from captivity. Because their return, the re-edification of the walls and houses of Jerusalem, the renovation of the covenant, and ordination of their policy are therein contained. Esther The history of Queen Esther is of the time of the captivity, and therefore the writer must have been of the same time, or after it. Job The book of Job hath no mark in it of the time wherein it was written, and though it appears sufficiently, Ezekiel 14.14 and James 5.11, that he was no famed person. Yet the book itself seemeth not to be a history, but a treatise concerning a question in ancient time much disputed, why wicked men have often prospered in this world, and good men have been afflicted. And it is the most probably, because from the beginning, to the third verse of the third chapter, where the complaint of Job beginneth, the Hebrew is, as St. Jerome testifies, in prose. And from thence to the sixth verse of the last chapter in hexameter verses, and the rest of that chapter again in prose. So that the dispute is all in verse, and the prose is added, but as a preface in the beginning, and an epilogue in the end. But verse is no usual style of such, as either are themselves in great pain, as Job, or of such as come to comfort them, as his friends. But in philosophy, especially moral philosophy, in ancient time frequent. The Psalter. The Psalms were written the most part by David, for the use of the choir. To these are added some songs of Moses and other holy men, and some of them after the return from the captivity, as the 137 and the 126, whereby it is manifest that the Psalter was compiled and put into the form it now hath, after the return of the Jews from Babylon. The Proverbs. The Proverbs, being a collection of wise and godly sayings, partly of Solomon, partly of Aga the son of Jacob, and partly of the mother of King Lemuel, cannot probably be thought to have been collected by Solomon, rather than by Aga, or the mother of Lemuel. And that, though the sentences be theirs, yet the collection or compiling them into this one book, was the work of some other godly man, that lived after them all. Ecclesiastes and the Canticles the books of Ecclesiastes and the Canticles have nothing that was not Solomon's, except it be the titles, or inscriptions. For, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. And, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's, seem to have been made for distinction's sake, then, when the books of Scripture were gathered into one body of the law. To the end, that not the doctrine only, but the authors also might be extant. The Prophets Of the Prophets, the most ancient, are Sophaniah, Jonas, Amos, Hosea, Isaiah, and Micaiah, who lived in the time of Amaziah, and Azariah, otherwise Ozias, kings of Judah. But the book of Jonas is not properly a register of his prophecy, for that is contained in these few words, Forty days and mean ivy shall be destroyed. But a history or narration of his frowardness in disputing God's commandments, so that there is small probability he should be the author, seeing he is the subject of it. But the book of Amos is his prophecy. Jeremiah, Abdias, Nahum, and Habakkuk prophesied in the time of Josiah. Ezekiel, Daniel, Agias, and Zacharias in the captivity. When Joel and Malachi prophesied is not evident by their writings. But considering the inscriptions or titles of their books, it is manifest enough that the whole scripture of the Old Testament was set forth in the form we have it. After the return of the Jews from their captivity in Babylon, and before the time of Ptolemaeus Philadelphus, that caused it to be translated into Greek by seventy men, which were sent him out of Judea for that purpose. And if the books of Apocrypha, which are recommended to us by the church, though not for canonical, yet for profitable books for our instruction, may in this point be credited. The scripture was set forth in the form we have it in, by Esdras, as may appear by that which he himself saith, in the second book, chapter 14, verse 21, 22, etc. Where speaking to God, he saith thus, Thy law is burnt, therefore no man knoweth the things which thou hast done, or the works that are to begin. 
But if I have found grace before thee, send down the Holy Spirit into me, and I shall write all that hath been done in the world, since the beginning, which were written in thy law. That men may find thy path, and that they which will live in the later days, may live. In verse 45. And it came to pass, say, when the forty days were fulfilled, that the highest spake, saying, The first that thou hast written, publish openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. But keep the seventy last, that thou mayst deliver them onely to such as be wise among the people. And thus much concerning the time of the writing of the books of the Old Testament. The New Testament The writers of the New Testament lived all in less than an age after Christ's ascension, and had all of them seen our Savior, or been his disciples, except St. Paul and St. Luke. And consequently whatsoever was written by them, is as ancient as the time of the Apostles. But the time wherein the books of the New Testament were received, and acknowledged by the Church to be of their writing, is not altogether so ancient. For, as the books of the Old Testament are derived to us, from no higher time than that of Esdras, who by the direction of God's Spirit retrieved them, when they were lost. Those of the New Testament, of which the copies were not many, nor could easily be all in any one private man's hand, cannot be derived from a higher time. That that wherein the governors of the church collected, approved, and recommended them to us, as the writings of those apostles and disciples, under whose names they go. The first enumeration of all the books, both of the Old and New Testament, is in the canons of the apostles, supposed to be collected by Clement I, after St. Peter, Bishop of Rome. But because that is but supposed, and by many questioned, the Cousel of Laodicea is the first we know, that recommended the Bible to the then Christian churches. For the writings of the prophets and apostles, and this council was held in the 364. Year after Christ. At which time, though ambition had so far prevailed on the great doctors of the church, as no more to esteem emperors, though Christian, for the shepherds of the people, but for sheep. And emperors not Christian, for wolves, and endeavored to pass a their doctrine, not for counsel and information, as preachers, but for laws, as absolute governess. And thought such frauds as tended to make the people the more obedient to Christian doctrine, to be pious. Yet I am persuaded they did not therefore falsify the scriptures, though the copies of the books of the New Testament were in the hands only of the ecclesiastics. Because if they had had an intention so to do, they would surely have made them more favorable to their power over Christian princes and civil sovereignty than they are. I see not therefore any reason to doubt, but that the Old and New Testament, as we have them now, are the true registers of those things which were done and said by the prophets and apostles. And so perhaps are some of those books which are called Apocrypha, if left out of the canon, not for inconformity of doctrine with the rest, but only because they are not found in the Hebrew. For after the conquest of Asia by Alexander the Great, there were few learned Jews that were not perfect in the Greek tongue. For the seventy interpreters that converted the Bible into Greek were all of them Hebrews, and we have extant the works of Philo and Josephus, both Jews, written by them eloquently in Greek. But it is not the writer, but the authority of the church, that mocketh the book canonical. Their scope. And although these books were written by divers men, yet it is manifest the writers were all endued with one and the same spirit, and that they conspire to one and the same end. Which is the setting forth of the rights of the kingdom of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. For the book of Genesis, deriveth the genealogy of God's people, from the creation of the world, to the going into Egypt. The other four books of Moses contain the election of God for their king, and the laws which he prescribed for their government. The books of Joshua, Judges, Ruth, and Samuel, to the time of Saul, describe the acts of God's people, till the time they cast off God's yoke, and called for a king. After the manner of their neighbor nations. The rest of the history of the Old Testament derives the succession of the line of David to the captivity out of which line was to spring the restorer of the kingdom of God. Even our blessed Savior God the Son, whose coming was foretold in the books of the prophets, after whom the evangelist writ his life and actions and his claim to the kingdom. Whilst he lived one earth, and lastly, the acts and epistles of the apostles declare the coming of God, the Holy Ghost, and the authority he left with them and their successors for the direction of the Jews, and for the invitation of the Gentiles. In summa, the histories and the prophecies of the Old Testament and the Gospels 
and epistles of the New Testament have had one and the same scope, to convert men to the obedience of God, one, and Moses, and the priests, two, and the man Christ, and three, and the apostles, and the successors to apostolical power. For these three at several times did represent the person of God, Moses, and his successors the high priests and kings of Judah, in the Old Testament, Christ himself, in the time he lived on earth, and the apostles and their successors, from the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost descended on them, to this day. The question of the authority of the scriptures stated. It is a question much disputed between the diverse sects of Christian religion, from whence the scriptures derive their authority. Which question is also propounded sometimes in other terms, as, how we know them to be the word of God, or, why we believe them to be so. And the difficulty of resolving it, are he saith chiefly from the improperness of the words wherein the question itself is couched. For it is believed on all hands, that the first and origin all author of them is God, and consequently the question disputed, is not that. Again, it is manifest, that none can know they are God's word, though all true Christians believe it, but those to whom God himself hath revealed it supernaturally. And therefore the question is not rightly moved, of our knowledge of it. Lastly, when the question is propounded of our belief, because some are moved to believe for one and others for other reasons, there can be rendered no one general answer for them all. The question truly stated is, by what authority they are made law? Their authority and interpretation. As far as they differ not from the laws of nature, there is no doubt, but they are the law of God and carry their authority with them, legible to all men that have the use of natural reason. But this is no other authority than that of all other moral doctrine consonant to reason, the dictates whereof are laws, not made, but eternal. If they be made law by God himself, they are of the nature of written law, which are laws to them only to whom God hath so sufficiently published them, as no man can excuse himself, by saying, He know not they were his. He therefore, to whom God hath not supernaturally revealed, that they are his, nor that those that published them, were sent by him, is not obliged to obey them, by any authority, but his, whose commands have already the force of laws, that is to say, by any other authority than that of the commonwealth residing in the sovereign, who only has the legislative power. Again, if it be not the legislative authority of the commonwealth that giveth them the force of laws, it must be some other authority derived from God, either private or public. If private, it obliges only him, to whom in particular God hath been pleased to reveal it. For if every man should be obliged to take for God's law what particular men, on pretense of private inspiration or revelation, should obtrude upon him, and such a number of men, that out of pride and ignorance, take their own dreams and extravagant fancies and madness for testimonies of God's Spirit, or out of ambition, pretend to such divine testimonies, falsely and contrary to their own consciences, it were impossible that any divine law should be acknowledged. If public, it is the authority of the commonwealth or of the church. But the church, if it be one person, is the same thing with the commonwealth of Christians, called the commonwealth, because it consisteth of men united in one person, their sovereign. And a church, because it consisteth in Christian men, united in one Christian sovereign. But if the church be not one person, then it hath no authority at all, it can neither command, nor do any action at all, nor is capable of having any power or right to anything nor has any will, reason, nor voice, for all these qualities are personal. Now if the whole number of Christians be not contained in one commonwealth, they are not one person, nor is there an universal church that hath any authority over them. And therefore the scriptures are not made laws by the universal church. Or if it be one commonwealth, then all Christian monarchs and states are private persons and subject to be judged, deposed, and punished by an universal sovereign of all Christendom. So that the question of the authority of the scriptures is reduced to this, whether Christian kings and the sovereign assemblies and Christian commonwealths be absolute in their own territories. Immediately under God, or subject to one vicar of Christ, constituted over the universal church. To be judged, condemned, deposed, and put to death, as he shall think expedient or necessary for the common good. Which question cannot be resolved without a more particular consideration of the kingdom of God from whence also we are to judge of the authority of interpreting the scripture. For, 
Whosoever hath a lawful power over any writing, to make it law, hath the power also to approve or disapprove the interpretation of the same. For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.